be primarily about how we can uh, improve their form, consistency and technique, how we can drill that without that being boring. And you know, there's a number of former players here, I'm sure that would attest when coach said, right, there's six minutes on the clock, go and do your form shooting. And you stood there and did this one. You were interested for about 20 to 30 seconds. All right, so part of coaching now with the modern athlete, we've got to engage them. We, we have to engage them early and we have, to, we have to edutain them. So we've got to educate them, but there's got to be some entertainment value there so they stay involved. Now, if they're going to stand there at the basket for three minutes and do that, yes, that will give them some rote learning, but it's not going to capture them and more and more researched in terms of education, but also in terms of coaching is uh, we need to engage them in experiential learning. So they need to learn by doing. More than ever, learn by doing. And we need to link it as closely as we possibly can to things that are going to happen in a game. It's interesting, we've done this drill for a thousand years. And if you, if you do this, no problem. I was talking to Nelson about this during the week. The old drill where you start, the kid's got the ball in their palm. Well, that happens every possession of every game, doesn't it? Where someone's got the ball in their palm, holding it with one hand. What's the first thing we tell kids when we, when we want them to shoot? Make the, sure the ball's out of your palm. Yet we say, put the ball in your palm and do that. So, you know, what we want to do is still have the value of those form and techni technique based drills to get the, the rote learning and for them to see the ball going through the basket consistently. But we want to do it where it's engaging and they're getting some game like situations. So the first thing we're going to do, and again, all these, I'm going to move pretty quickly through them. All these drills in the form setting, you might only do for two minutes each. And you might say, that's not long enough. But I would encourage you to invest six to eight minutes on their shooting and form and technique at a youth level practice every practice. So if you, do, if you select three to four of these and do them for 90 seconds to two minutes each, there's your six to eight minutes of form shooting and their improvement will be exponential. All right, guys, get a ball and come out here, spread out. Ball, mate. One of the biggest problems before they can get to shoot the ball is what I call the gather. All right, so they're going to gather it two ways. They're going to gather it from a catch or they're going to gather it from the dribble. How often do you see young players Phil, can you throw that to me, please? And they fumble it. We set that up before the clinic. And they're doing this before, and then they lift into their shot. All right? So the first thing we need to get them to do is gather the ball cleanly and get it quickly to the set point. Now, your set point might vary, particularly with the, the age of the athletes. All right? I tend to teach the set point as long as it's comfortable around the sternum. You don't want it too much higher when they bring it from the chin because that turns it a little bit robotic. You, a lot of people will say you've got to eliminate the dip. Well, I, can't, I don't know of a great shooter in the history of basketball who hasn't got some sort of dip or roll when they shoot. And what I mean by the dip is they get it here and it's just a little roll to create that fluid momentum. Very hard, if I catch it here, and try and generate here, it makes me a little bit robotic, makes me a little bit stiff, takes away the naturalness, all right? The other thing that we want to talk to them about on the gather is their feet. And our new national coach of the women's program, Sandy Brondello, new Opals coach, uses the term light contact. And for those old enough in the room to have seen Sandy play, that's exactly how she played. It wasn't it was, everything was light, everything was short contact, right? Creating energy off the floor, through the floor. So what we're going to get these guys to do is, 
you're just going to drop it, all right? And get to the ball quickly and get it to your set point. Ready? Go. Go. Here we go. Good. And again, three or four times. Let's go. All right. Now, stop. Pretty good. Now, if I'm a right-handed shooter and it's a straight line catch, I want to make sure I'm stepping in left, right. Why? Unless you're Basil Faulty, we don't walk like this. All right? There's all the young ones are saying, who's Basil Faulty? All right? We put our left foot forward, then we put our right. So same thing. We want to make sure in any straight line catch, if I'm right-handed, I'm skipping through. But when we talk about one, two on that catch, it's not one, two. It's one, two. So it's not this. Because that doesn't create any energy. What we want to create is energy off the floor or what we call up force off the floor. So now as you drop it out, guys, I use the term skip through the catch. Skip through the catch. So it's out, bang. All right, we shouldn't be able to hear. We should hear the minor squeak. All right, throw it out. Skip through the catch. Be quiet. Go. Good. Here we go. Good. Now, same thing. I want you to skip through the catch. One of the most underrated aspects of shooting is the shot fake. If you think of the best shooters in the world right now, JJ Redick, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Kyle Korver, whoever you want to, in the Boomers, Ryan Brockoff, every great shooter, for those Novocastrians, Michael Johnson, remember, shot fake. They could all shoot it beautifully, but they had a beautiful shot fake. All right, so now you're going to skip through the catch and lift. All right, the ball's going to start below your eye line and you're going to lift and hold. All right, here we go. Go, quick to the ball, quick to the ball, good. Shot fake now, up, down, good. All right, now, put them under a little bit of pressure. Now I want you to throw it out, but the ball can't bounce. It's not this. All right, be careful when you teach any sort of toss back or spin out, is they don't because that's going to pull them. They've got to catch it down. They've got to catch the ball skipping through the ball, creating energy through the ball off the floor. So now you're going to spin the ball out, but it can't bounce, and you've got to get to it quickly, skip through the catch, one, two, shot fake. The ball cannot go above your sternum, and it must travel one metre. Ball cannot go above your sternum, and it must travel out one metre. If you're right-handed, you need to skip through it, catch it on the left, right. If you let, is there any left-handers? Good, because I don't coach left-handers. All right? So skip through the catch. Out a metre, not above your sternum. Get to the ball quickly, gather it cleanly. Go. Good. And again, quick, don't flip it up. Out. Good. Good. All right, now, same thing, going on an angle. So that's a straight line catch. Firstly, you're going to throw it out, go heel, toe, toe, and that quick footwork into a shot fake. Now you're going to spin it out this way. So now it's inside foot, heel, toe, toe. All right, now when we talk to kids about their footwork and their foot pattern, I say heel, toe, toe because that last let foot down, I need to engage my calf, all right? If I'm trying to play off my heel down, I can't do it, there's no engagement. But be careful, they're very literal learners. I say to them heel, toe, toe, and what they'll do is this. Heel, toe, toe. It's not that, you've got to show them and then get them to do it as quickly as they possibly can. So I spin it out now. And I engage that calf, because that's what drives me up and creates the energy off the floor. So you're on an angle. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Don't spin it up. Spin it out. Go find it. Go chase it down. Ball can't bounce. Good. 
There you go. All right, now, last one. Straight line, long catch. All right, you're going to dribble, loop it out. It can't go above your chest. It's got to cover two metres. You've got to get to the ball. Skip and lift. Go, go, go. One dribble. So, hey, watch. One dribble, throw it out. Out. Can't go above your chest. You've got to surge through the ball, skip through the catch without it bouncing. Go. Good. And again, throw it further. Ball can't go above your chest. All right, now stop. A little bit harder, some travels. And a couple of players went instinctively into what? A jump stop or a one beat. And that's okay. My preference, and I think more rhythmic when you're shooting the ball, is always step through the catch, left, right, or right, left. All right? My issue with jump stopping is really, unless you're a high level athlete, you're creating a lot of energy going which way on a jump stop? That way. My energy's going that way. On a stride stop or a two beat stop, that stops me, that pops me. But if you've got jump stoppers, again, shooting's got to be a natural act. It's got to be comfortable. Don't, there's no absolutes in coaching. The worst word you can use is always. Always do this. Because the pass isn't always at the same level. The defense isn't always on the same distance. So if you've got some jump stoppers, that's okay. But make sure you think about, do they gather it cleanly? Do they get it quickly to a comfortable set point? And do they get into their lift? And is it short contact? I know there's some coaches here that have coached under 12s on and off for years, all right? What's the first thing they do when you talk to them about jump stops, the first practice when they're bottom, bottom age? Jump stop, all right? Remember, they're very literal learners, so we've got to make sure that we give them descriptive words to get them to understand that basketball is a, play, is a game played with your heels are very rarely on the ground, all right? You engage in those calf muscles and go. Now, so we get to the basket, what we're going to do, guys, is this. We're going to have four lines at each basket. The first rule will be this. It's really important, and Coach Isley will touch on this so I won't steal his thunder. You can't teach the game in isolation. You've got to make sure that you get more drill out of every single drill. All right, so we're going to work into some pivoting into our form shooting. So what I want you to do, be a shooter, one, two, three, four, even five around here. Start here with your left foot forward, pivot and shot fake. Pivot and shot fake, pivot and jump shoot, hold your follow through nice and high until the ball's gone through the net. That'll be the first one. That'll be the first one. The next one, stand there, all right? You're gonna throw the ball over this shoulder Chase it down. When you get to it, left, right, shoot. Go. Good. All right. The next one. Here. All right. You're going to throw it over your shoulder. Come to a catch it. Come to a jump stop. All right. And you're going to go left foot, reverse pivot into your shot. All right, show us that, quick. Only throw it out to about here. Ready, go. Catch, jump stop, reverse pivot, into your shot. It's still form, we're still working on that technique. There's still no a lot of variables, but we've got to add pivoting. I've just been at the under 20 nationals and that we're lucky our friends in the refereeing ranks aren't calling every travel or there'd be 35 a game. Ruin the nationals. All right, so we've got to be ruthless dictators on footwork. So we're going to go to the baskets. So you've got your three pivot. Then you've got your shoulder and step in. Then you've got your over, jump stop, rear pivot into your shot. Go, go, quick. Up. 
Spread out a little bit, good. All right, hold up. Now, we haven't, hold up, we haven't spoken a lot about the grip or what we do. Guys, put the ball in your shooting pocket for me, where you naturally would have it. Now, what I want you to do, no, so you're about to go into your shot, you've got that cradle. Now, I just want you to push the ball back two centimetres, back. That's a great teaching point for young players. All right, most, most players don't shoot the ball from their palm, but they do shoot the ball from two thirds of their palm. So just get them to isolate and just walk around and just, it's a centimetre, two centimetres, not in their fingertips, but just roll it back. So now they've got more feel. So when they go into their shot, right, you're gonna create that reverse action. You see a lot of young players, even at the under 20s, it's a knuckle ball. For those from a baseball background, the ball doesn't spin. All right, you see the best shooters of all time, Andrew Gaze. Andrew Gaze could stand here and shoot the ball with no rebound. If it went in, where would it bounce back to? Straight back to him. Why? That reverse rotation, it was so pure that literally it would bounce back to him. All right? So let's go, let's go quick. Good. Good. High and soft. Shoot the ball high and soft. Right, get into your next one now. Get into your next one now. So flip it over your shoulder, turn. Skip through the catch, get it done, let's go. The other thing that with form shooting, and we do this a little bit at the center of excellence now, is we get them to, to count makes and takes on their form shooting. We get them to record their form shooting. Why? You think about it, if you played and the coach said go and do form shooting, you wouldn't put any value on it. You've got to put a value on every single shot. So at the end of that session, I would say to them, okay, how many of you made? How many did you take? How many did you make? Because other than that, they're just going to shoot. Every shot's got to have a value. All right, next one. Next one. Throw it out. Jump, stop, left foot, reverse pivot, shoot the ball with arc. Now, hold up. Hold up. When we, when we talk about form shooting, I want to talk to them about all shots, all net, all the time. All shots, all net, all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't use the backboard. All right? I think that's a forgotten art, isn't it? use of the backboard. What it does mean is the iron of the rim has nothing to do with our shot. We want all shots, all net, all the time. And the last thing, guys, we want to shoot it high and soft. The ball must go up to go in, all right? All shots, all net, all the time. Now, own, I want you to count makes and misses, but the only make you can count is an all net, is a swish, all right? So flip it, chase it down, jump stop, reverse pivot into your shot, go. All right, hold up. Hold up, good job guys. I'm moving at warp speed because I've got the big dogs over there with the tapping their watch. So I'm moving at warp speed, so you've got to keep up. All right. The other thing with form shooting is we always shoot, or you know, there's that terrible word. We spend a lot of time in this perfect environment. So we've added some movement, we've added some pivoting, 
we've given it some, some game-like situation. Well, the younger, and again, for those guys that have got under 12s and even under 14s, if you were to do a ratio on catch and shoot shots and dribble and shoot shots, which would be the highest ratio? What's the first thing every 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old boy does when they catch the ball? Dribble it. They do, all right? So we do all these great things, they get to the game and 85% of the shots they take are off the dribble. So if we're gonna impact technique and form, we better practice what happens in a game. So now what you've got, guys, is three pound gathers. So you're gonna have your right foot slightly forward, left foot, uh, left, uh, right foot slightly back, left foot down. You're gonna go one, two, three, gather, and as you gather, you're going to drive this foot forward and jump shoot the ball. So it's one, two, three. Now on the gather, you want to make sure that you bring it up, sorry, bring it up on an arc like that. Too often kids gather it here and they take the right hand to the gather. All right, it's got to come here to line up and we're shooting over our right toe. So it's pound, 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 gather, lift and shoot. Go. And with young players, you will see if they're left eye shooters. We used to have a player at the Centre of Excellence, and she's a left eye shooter, because she's got uh, vision issues with her right. So she here, and she's, she's right handed, but she shoots in front of her left eye. This is a great drill to see that. Do they pull it over, or do they go straight up? Okay, and it is. It's a different learning style. It's a different uh, brain mechanism. All right, now, you've got, hold up, hold up, you've got left, so here, left, skip in, shot fake, right, skip in, shot fake, left, skip in, shot fake, right, skip in, shoot, all right, right, left, right, left, pull, go, go, go. Hold up. Last one. All right, you're going to start at the junction there that's where the three-point line changes. You're going to spin it out to the elbow, get to the ball, one inside foot, one, two, all right? Shot fake. Then you're going to spin it out to the baseline, all right? One, two, shot fake. You're going to spin it back out to the elbow, inside foot, one, two, shot fake. You're going to spin it out to there, catch and shoot. All right, show me that. Here we go. So we got technique to live. Boom, good. Boom, good lift, good. Good feet, big square up. Shot, let's go, let's go. Get it up, let's go. Again. Coaching young players is a little bit of trickery. We're working a lot on our technique. We're working a lot on our shooting footwork. But what else are we working on? Pivoting. If you can't pivot, you can't play. But if you come to practice and get them to do 20 minutes of pivoting drills, that be the, might be the last time you see them at practice. So we've got to sneak some things in so now they're doing a shooting drill, they're getting a lot of repetitions, but they're getting four pivots before they shoot. That's a little coaching by trickery. All right, hold up. Good. Guys, just take a seat over there and get a drink. Be quiet for a sec. Thank you. 
So we're going to move on to, to Coach Isley. Now with those, we just did about 27 minutes of, of form drills. Obviously, you're not going to do that at your practice. But if you can pinch three or four of those every practice, I would honestly suggest that you budget, and I'm big on budgeting in the, in the practice plan environment, six minutes of every practice to form shooting. And you, you sneak in a bit of pivoting as well. So you're working their feet, you're working their hands, you're working their stance, and then you can move on to the next thing. I know everyone's really time poor with practice. There's your warm up. We didn't have to, you know, if you think about what a warm up is, get the heart rate up, you know, get blood flow through, you know, warm the core temperature of the muscles, all that just did. If you were going over there now, you could hear all of them. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to be no good for the next hour, but we've got some things done. And in six minutes, if you structure it right, you should get 40 to 50 shots up per athlete. Everyone with a ball. Everyone with a ball, they should get at least 30 up, but it should be closer to 50. Now, if you think about that, that's the best six minutes of, that you'll spend in your coaching career. And if you do that week in, week out, then you go to the more exciting drills that my colleagues are going to do. Now you've got a chance to, to develop some worthwhile shooters. All right? Um, we'll get some questions later because that's not rocket science. Um, we'll keep moving because I'm cognizant of your time, particularly those guys that have come down from Port Macquarie two and a half hours and other people that have travelled. So thanks, guys. All right, first of all, I'm very, very happy to be here. And all that propaganda about I'm the greatest uh, since sliced bread, that's a lie. Because no way am I the greatest clinician in the world, without a doubt. Even though I have had tremendous experience, I've um, been so fortunate. Basketball has been my life. It really has. Uh, I had a chance uh, uh, to, to, to play professionally. I had a chance now. I've coached in the three uh, national teams in uh, Peru. It was in South America and in Barbados and in Mozambique in Africa, mostly with women teams, you know. So I've had a great opportunity, and then since uh, I quit coaching in 2006, I've had a chance to, to visit almost 110 countries. And most of my work has been in the underdeveloped world. I've never had a chance to come to a country like this that has such a high level of basketball. Most of my, 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 my work's in places like Guatemala, Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, Togo, Benin, uh, uh, countries of that nature, you know. But I am very happy to be here, mostly because of my relationship that I have with Coach Hunt, who is the president of our World Association, and Peter, who is such a great friend. Him and I have had the opportunity to be uh, sort of... Uh, writing the technical reports, they call it scouting, for uh, uh, four World University Games and also the World Championship for Women in Turkey 2014. That's one of the other things that I have uh, I've been so lucky to have a chance to do, you know, is to see the different styles uh, uh, and see the young players of these different countries that eventually move on up and, and become stars, you know. So I'm not going to talk very much. Coach, uh, Hunt and, and Peter basically going, were going to base everything on shooting. I just thought I would give you all some drills, or we can call them learning activities. Because a drill is nothing more than a repetition of a particular skill. So if we do a passing drill or a dribbling drill, then basically we're just using a mechanism there to improve that skill. Whereas a learning activity is something where you use and develop that skill. Also, the famous uh, quote that I picked up from Peter about get more practice out of practice and more skill, you know, you want to get more skill out of the skill work and more practice out of the practice, is you need to add what's called complexity or variable or loading. I told Patrick, I said, we need to make a new dictionary for basketball because as you travel around the world, there's all kind of different words that mean really the same thing. So when you load or you add complexity or you add variables, you take a drill and you just work on different areas of our game. So it's not just really just one thing. So I will uh, 
go through about four or five. Like I said, I'm used to doing five and six day clinics, so it, it's pretty tough for me to come out here for 30 or 40 minutes. But knowing that Coach Hunt's gonna follow me, I think that we, we, we're gonna be in good shape, you know. All right, so let's have, we're gonna start off with one I call just a three point passing drill. This is one that I did many years ago. I'm very fortunate, I played for Coach Press Maravich. If you ever heard of Pistol Pete Maravich, well, Pete and I were friends since we were seven years of age. So I basically grew up in the Maravich family. I have tremendous respect for him and logically Pete, who's one of the great basketball players of all time. He averaged like 44 points a game for three years in his uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year at Louisiana State, and that will never be broken. That will be for first, no, no coach is gonna let a player shoot that much. And you remember, he didn't even have a three-point shot. He probably averaged 60. So most of my basketball comes from Coach Maravich. He was a tremendous uh, innovator of the game. Things that he was thinking, that he was doing or thinking in 1960, 1970, became true many years later when Pete uh, signed his $1.2 million contract with Atlanta in 1971. His dad on television said, in 20 years there will be peanuts. And it really is, because do you know what the salary day for an NBA basic, uh, player sitting on the bench? About a million dollars. I was drafted by Buffalo, which is the old Los Angeles Clippers, and I signed a $25,000 contract. So you can see how the, this 1.2 million is now peanuts. Okay, let's come on out here. Can I just have first the girls? Let's just do it with the women, or the ladies. So, I'm gonna have three guys to come out and be passers. No balls, give me three players out here. Give me one right here. One right down here, sort of under the basket. You girls make one line behind me. One line behind me. And we're only gonna use one ball. We're gonna use one ball. So just took the ball. Uh, you keep your ball. <laughs> now, look at what we do here. This is gonna be a movement. Quick movement and passing. Basketball is a game of movement. If you cannot move, you cannot play. If you cannot pivot, you cannot play. I'll get into that later. Because you can have a kid and he can be here and he's a great dribbler, you know? Uh-oh, I lost this thing. I really don't like these things, but it's all right. He can be a great dribbler and you put him on the baseline and said, okay, I want you to dribble as fast as you can down to that end and come back. If he can't run, he can't do it. So movement, this is gonna be one, you'll make a good nice pass over here and you come around like this, right here. All right, come here. Just as soon as you see that she's getting there, you're moving into the middle, good pass, pass there. You start around him, then you're coming back, give it, pass, Go around and get out. Come back, pass, give it up there. You two have finished. Hey, uh, you'll be working in tandem. You'll be working in tandems. All right, let's go. Pass, go, go. Let's go, let's go, check. Come on, come on, let's go. Quick, 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 quick. Good passes. Show hands. 10 fingers, two hands. Have those hands up. Follow the ball, see the ball. Let's go, that's it. Yeah, I think y'all did this before. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're going to go one more minute. One more minute. <coughs> hands, hands, hands. 
Show those hands. All right, stop. All right. One of the major areas that we see, Peter and I, in a lot of these tournaments is a lot of passes that are not caught. And a lot of the time it's not caught because the player's not prepared to catch the ball. It's not that he doesn't know how to catch it. He's not prepared to catch it. So they talk about hungry hands. You know, I always was taught ten fingers and two hands. That's how you want to be. Uh, the position you want to be in when you're going to catch a basketball. All right, this was a very simple thing. Now, this is more or less a warm-up. Give me the guys in here. Well, y'all take a little blow. Coach, it's okay to move them in like that, boys, girls? All right, you got any cones? Six. I should have asked that before I started this stuff. There ain't nothing on them anyway. Just go after that. All right. Now we're gonna, I use this a lot in warm up. And I'll be honest with you, any coach that says he invented something is a liar. Because all coaches do is just steal from others. So I've stolen everything I know. I saw this drill from the Russian women's volleyball team, and I modified it. It's sort of a warm-up drill, but when we finish doing it, I'm going to ask you, what have we worked on when I finish? You know, what have we worked on? All right, guys, what we're going to do? We're going to have, we'll use, we'll use uh, six of you. You'll have three on offense and three on defense. Three on offense, three on defense. You're going to play in an area that's designated by the cones. No dribble. All we're working on is passing, moving, and catching. So you can't dribble, so what do you have to do? When you can't dribble, you've got to move to get open and catch the ball. And we'll see how many. Okay. All right, I'm going to make me a court right here. This is going to be a court. Right, give me three blue and three whites to start this out. Three blues and three whites. All right, right here. This is a team. This is another team. Defense on him. Defense here, defense here. All right, y'all spread out. You got the court. Now, there's no dribbling. So if we can't dribble, what do we have to do? Got to move to get open to catch the ball. That's one of the things we'll work on here. So, are y'all ready? Let's see if you can make six passes without it getting intercepted. Let's make it just a little bit. Six passes without the ball getting intercepted. Go! Boom, boom, boom! Oh, all right, out of bounds, change. White, white with the ball. All right, move! All right, like Peter always says, you got to live with the mess. It's going to be a mess when you're working with kids like this and you put them in situations like this. Give them a time to try to find a solution. All right, ready, go. Move, move, move. All right, let's get six more in here real quick. Spread out a little bit. Look at the court. Got to use all the court. Go. Move, move, move. All right. Can somebody tell me what is a great 
tremendous problem you're seeing here. Individual action. Individual, they're not screening for each other, they're not working together, they're not talking. All right, what about after they catch the ball? What is one of the great, uh, very bad problem I'm seeing? Absolutely, not pivoting. Pivoting, when you catch that ball, you have to be able to pivot to make a, a, a good pass. When you're working with young kids at the beginning, teach them to jump stop and to pivot. Pivot is so important because it's such an integral part of the game. Some people may call it foot movement. Well, I'll just give you an example. If this player right here, and I'm off on a tangent, but that's all right, he takes a shot, fake shot, fake a shot, yeah? All right, the ball's gone. We don't need a ball. You take a shot, and he starts this way. My responsibility is to block him out. How do I block him out? I do a right foot, front pivot, make contact. That's one example. I'm right here. I break out, I catch the ball, what do I have to do to face the basket? Right foot front, I could do left foot reverse. Another thing of pivoting, even a dribble. I'm coming here with my left hand, I make a reverse pivot. Basically, I did a pivot. That's why pivoting for me is the most important thing that you need to work with with young kids. They have a problem with that. They're not pivoting correctly. Let's go. Move, now move. Get low, get low, downward, get low. When you catch that ball, get down low. That's better. Move, move. All right, okay. The purpose of this was working on movement without the ball because in a game of 40 minutes you might touch the ball four minutes that's been proven four minutes of a 40 minute game you may have the ball in your hands so what are you doing the other 36 minutes you're playing with your feet so you got to move so this is working on movement Reception and pivoting more than anything. I always used to do this before I, I would, I always, I would use this almost every day in a practice session. It also is a form warming up because why do you warm up? Two basic reasons. Raise the body temperature and introduce the fundamental movements that will occur in a game. So in a game, do you do this? Do you do this right here? Do you do this? Do you do this? So if you go do that in a game, so that's why you warm up. So you need to include all that stuff when you have a, what we call a progressive preparation of play. That's an old FIBA term that maybe Coach Hunt don't like, but progressive preparation of players is a warm up. Incorporation of major content is that big sucking area that probably 90 minutes, you know, that's your major component of the training session. The progressive reduction is the cool down. All right, now let's get everybody here. All right, I want to get those cones off for me, please. Let's get uh, one player right there at the three-point line. One here in the middle. And one player down there. The rest of you come with me. Come with me. Let's go. Quick, 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 quick. This is a good transition drill that's going to involve passing, fundamental, running, shooting, one-on-one. -on -one. And this is how we do it. Let's get Half of you come right here. No, we just start. We'll do it simple. Get two lines. Two lines. Two lines. Equal. Try to make it equal. Now, 
We're going to do a tic-tac, get some more balls. We'll need a couple more balls there. Let's have three balls. We have three groups of balls. Now, you two start out. Quick passing. No, one ball per group. One ball per group. So you all are coming up the court as fast as you can doing tic-tac passing. Move. All right, right here, about this time at the foul line, extend it on this last pass, layup. You're going to go there and make a layup. Now, you come in and get the rebound. Now, now comes your toughest thing. You've got to run as fast as you can. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We'll play defense on this guy. Move the ball. Move it. Replace. Move it. Replace, give it, play one-on-one. -on -one. All right, let's go back and see if y'all can do that. Yes, I can group be ready. Go! Quick! Shot! Rebound! Let's go! Move the ball! Move it! Move it! Play! Go ahead, second group. Let's go, 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 go. Quick, 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 be quick, be quick. Come on. That's it. Call it. Stop, stop. I'm gonna put a little restrictions on it now. Two dribbles is all you're going to get, and we're going to change the, the outlet a little bit. So, we're going to have this group throw the ball off the backboard. Okay, throw it off the backboard, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a breakout dribble. Because, let's say I want to outlet pass to her, I can't do it, she's covered, so we're going to have a breakout I'm going to give her a long pass. When maybe I get Then I go for the rebound. And you'll do the same defense. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, read that. So, we're going to do that. Make this like going long, all the 
looking from here, run up the court, looking back at the ball. Very easy. Bust them to take off and take off and take off. Then they look at the ball. There's a reason why that's bad. But I am a fake. Right. But now I've got it. Try to get the player on the run. He goes strong, we do the same thing. Yeah, right, this time you'll be the, you'll be the, the uh, pastor. Uh, uh, no, right, you'll be the shooter. Right here, you'll be the shooter. Ready? All right, let's go.
few minutes on uh, shooting. Most great shooters have a hoop in their backyard and spend uh, lots of time shooting. Not surprising. But if you can teach them how to shoot using some of the form shooting that Peter showed, so they're their own shooting coach, then there'll be dramatic improvement. And we owe it to our players to teach them those fundamental shooting techniques. Shooting is one of the simplest fundamentals in the game. It's you and the ball. Sure, there's some defense there. Uh, and, and sometimes they may have to make more difficult finishes. But it's the simplest shot in the game. And those drills that Nelson Isley was going through there, the movement drills in particular, can help you get people to prepare to become good shooters. Good shooters do an extraordinary amount of work away from the ball. They do all their work away from the ball in preparing to set up and catch the ball and shoot it. One of the great shooters of all time, Andrew Gaze, 
was fantastic at setting his player up, knowing where he was going to receive the ball in whatever system he played. And then by the time he caught the ball, he knew exactly the type of shot and where he's going to, where he's going to take it from because he did all his preparation off the ball. Most great basketballers do their best work away from the ball. So think about that when you're teaching uh, kids how to shoot. I'm going to start with two simple shooting drills which emphasize communication, passing, position, accuracy, and continuous movement. Uh, and they're two of the, the best shooting drills that you can have if you've got a couple of groups. But in this, we emphasize, listen to this players, catch the ball down, pass properly, move quickly. Catch the ball down, pass accurately I should say, move quickly, and the fourth thing is be ready. Let's have three girls up, with two basketballers, have a point, wing, wing. Three players, two balls. Point, wing, wing, quick. Now, let's put the ball down here. You're gonna take a shot. The instant you take a shot, you're gonna follow up and get your rebound whether it's a make or a miss, you're then going to make a pass here. And then you're going, to, you're going to take the next shot, you're going to get your rebound, and you'll pass to you. Once you've made your pass, you're going to spot up and we'll have our feet on the three-point line, on the short three-point line. So that's where you're going to be taking your shots from. Then when you take your shot, you're going to get your rebound and then pass to whoever's free from these two. So there's going to be quick movement. You have to call out whether you're on the wing or you're on the point. Point is up here, wing, wing. Call out loudly, be down, get your hands in a stance, get your hands up ready, your body in a stance, ready to catch, and into those shooting positions that Peter Lonigan demonstrated earlier. We've got the idea of the drill. So there's going to be a lot of repetition There'll be a little bit of confusion, but this is what you do. Ready? Go. You shoot first. Go. Follow up. Quick. Quick. Where are you? Where are you? Pass. Where are you now? Where are you? Good. Here we go. Good. Quick, quick. Where are you? Go. Go. Quick, quick. Hold up. Now, it's highly desirable that we make some shots. It'd be really good if we could make a couple of shots. So you got the hang of the drill? Okay, just take a step in. See, I, I demonstrate this, but normally I tell people to shoot within their range. So I'd have to start demonstrating here. That wasn't too bad. Phil, is this pretty close? Maybe. So got the hang of the drill? Ready to go? Now, coaches. You could do this drill with a group here, a group down there. You could do it for 30 seconds. You could keep score over a couple of times. You could have standards for your team. We're going to do this drill for 30 seconds. We're going to make X out of so many. But notice primarily the drill became shot, move, and the standard of passing wasn't up to scratch. So make good passes, give a target, talk loudly, if you know each other's names, say, Sarah, I'm at the point. Jane, I'm at the wing, or whatever your names are. Okay? Ready? You start. Go. Good, good. Quickly. Quick, quick. Move. Next position. <coughs> quick, recover. Where are you? Good. Here we go. Good. Quick, get down. Good pass now. Good pass. Stop, stop. This position here, is that, a, is that a strong position? Is this a better position down here? Target hands, what's your name? 
Zoe. So Zoe knows to rocket that pass to you. So you're down, catch. Catch the ball down. If you want to write down something tonight, then you can leave a legacy with your players. Catch the ball down. Catch the ball in a down stance. So we avoid catching it, coming down, coming back up. Show 10 fingers. One young player picked me up once. They said, no, it's not 10 fingers, it's eight fingers and two thumbs. I said, we're gonna fudge a bit, we're gonna call these fingers. Show 10 fingers, catch it down, drive into your shot. All the shot techniques, the shot form that Peter Lonigan was going through relate to this drill. Last time, we're gonna go for 30 seconds. Let's see how many we make. Go! Come on, quick. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, why did you stop? You know, you got to, I had the buzzer sounding, ready to go. You got to keep going. Wasn't a bad drill, 30 seconds. How many did you make? How many did they make? Four. Four, you sure? Okay, good shooters know how many they take, how many they make. Let's get five people out, three basketballs. Fellas, five fellas, quick. So you can see after those, it's a good workout, isn't it? If, if you ask them to keep score, they have to keep score. Same drill, five players, three basketballs. Let's move around. Corner, wing, point, wing, corner. There are spots. That's where you're gonna be, call, gonna be calling for the ball. Understand the drill? We'll start off with you, you shoot first. Hold up, why did you bounce that? Oh, to get rhythm. So you could never catch and shoot. So just, just shoot, just catch and shoot. If we wanna get some, good. How was that rhythm? Good? Were you down? Well, are you deaf? <laughs> Catch it down. Ready, fellas? Go! You're away, you're away. Good, good talk. Come on, fellas. Let's get them up. Let's get them up there. Hands ready, hands ready. Good. Catch it down, catch it down. Hands up, catch it down. Stop, stop. Fellas, rank the quality of passes. Shooters, you're all shooters. Rank the quality of pass you are getting out of 10 to be able to catch, shoot, and knock it down. Five, soft. F what do you think? Six. Six. Five. Seven. seven. You just said it was bad and you're ranking seven out of ten. Ten's good, one's bad. Five. Six. Nah. Very generous markers. I wish I went to their school. We'd be getting high grades. About a two, fellas. If we rank on international standards, it's about a two out of 10. So we need to pick the standard of passes up. We need to catch it down. We'll go one more time. We'll go for 30 seconds. Girls, what did you get in 30 seconds? Four. We've got, we got more shooters. Let's see how we go with 30 seconds. Go. Good passes. Catch it down. Ten. 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Oh, how many? How many? How many? Six. Six. How many? He's not a bad player. They'll always try and take a little extra. It's not bad. We like to see that. It's not bad. Okay, take a seat. Take a seat. Not bad. So two, shoot, two of my favourite shooting drills. Communication, passing, stance, shooting, reinforcing the fundamentals that, uh, that Peter showed earlier. Uh, good workout. You can put scores on it. You can put time on it. If you know the girls are four, the guys are five. Let's get that in 30 seconds. That's your starting drill. So now you've got time, you've got score, you've got awareness, multi-skilling, but practicing shooting form. So two really good shooting drills. And you can do it in groups or what have you. And you can make them up. You can shoot uh, you know, first to five in the drill or first to 10 or first to seven, whatever it is. Um, often you can do that drill and you can say as a group, we're gonna, it's first to five. But if you miss every second shot, you go back to zero. So you make one, you miss the next one, it's zero. You make one, it's one, two is two, you miss the third, you go back to zero. So you miss the first, third, and the last one, the fifth, you're back to zero. Put a bit of pressure on it. So all the time we want to have some time, some score, some method of people shooting under some sort of pressure. So that way it isn't, oh, well, we just catch and shoot. There's some urgency about, about what they're doing. One thing we can, we can do a bit of work on now is shooting off screens. So the first type of screen we're going to talk about is a down screen. A down screen is when we make a pass from the top of the key to the wing and we set a screen from the top to the baseline. Now I'm presuming the players have been taught how to pass and screen properly in this. But we always want to emphasize any time there's screening action, there's an opportunity for the cutter and the screener. So we want to make sure that in each drill, those people involved in the drill have an opportunity to score. The most neglected people in screens away from the ball are the screener. There's so much attention focused to the cutter or the shooter that often we leave the screener unattended. So this is an awareness drill. We'll have two passes. It's not quite game realistic, but there'll be a shot opportunity for the, pass, for the uh, cutter and the screener. We use deliberate terminology in screening. We have a screener and a cutter, and we have defined responsibilities for each. The screener has to come down, set a screen with the appropriate angle. In this, in this first drill, there'll be a pass made, the screen will come down with their back to the ball, give a fist, come to a jump stop with their hands, clenched fist in this position for guys. In, normally it's in this position for girls to get a strong base and to protect themselves. The cutter off the screen will generally be down in the wing here. The defense will be in there. We want them to set up properly off the screen. So we walk as the screen comes in. The screen comes to a jump stop. Remember these teaching points, players. The screener calls, wait, wait. Most cutters go early off screens. The screener then, if it's going to be a straight cut towards the ball, which we'll show first, will plant the outside foot, give a catch fake behind the screener to drag the defender under the screen. Then on the outside foot, use that as your pivot foot, heel, knee and hip, or hand and hip comes through off the screen, comes towards the ball, catches the ball on the inside foot, calling straight. It's a straight cut. Catch the ball, turn, shoot. The screener that set the screen, it's a screen away will then call basket. In this case, on a screen off the ball, 
we have the screener inside foot, pivot foot, and simply step to the basket and call basket. If it was a screen and roll, we'd roll belly to the ball. But in this, we can see where the defense is, so we'll simply step through and go to the basket. Did you get all those teaching points? What was the third teaching point for the screener? Not bad, they've remembered some information, not necessarily in the correct order. Let's have a point, a wing, two people on that wing there, quickly. Doesn't matter whether it's guys or girls. Two basketballs, two basketballs. One ball there, one ball there. Uh, sorry, one ball there. No defense at the moment, righto. You're gonna be the cutter, you're the screener. For the moment, you're out, okay? So you're gonna make your pass. What do we always do when we pass towards the ball? Step away. No, most people think we step away. No, we step towards the ball. Because if the defense doesn't jump to the ball, we straight cut and get a layup down the middle. So whenever you pass the ball, just take a little step towards it. If the defense doesn't jump to the ball, you have a layup or you have a jump shot right off the charge circle there. Or for you, maybe a dunk. You agree with that? Can you dunk? Maybe. So make your pass. You guys, when you receive the ball, down in a stance. Good. You don't need to bounce it now, do you? You're a passer. Something to me may be foreign to you. Huh? Okay, so now you're going to make this little step to the ball. You're going to come away. The defense will normally be in here. Okay, I've jumped to the ball. Now you have to get your back to the ball. So you're a wide stance. Now which foot's your pivot foot here? You're going to walk in towards the screen at the point of the screen. I'll be you for a second, just a little less hair. So at the point of the screen, outside foot, you're going to give this catch fake. So it drags the defense behind, outside foot, pivot foot, heel, hip and hand. We're going to come off this towards the ball, calling straight, because this is a straight cut. Then you're going to receive the ball, inside foot, pivot foot, take your shot. You're going to open up and call. Basket, call it loudly. Who are you passing to? Screener, good. Who are you passing to? Um, the cutter. The cutter, good job, well done. Yep. Ready? Be slow. What do you got to say when you get down there? Wait. Wait. Ready? Here we go. Not bad, go again. Quick, quick, quick. Not bad, go again. This time, the cutter, what's your name? Noah. 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 You didn't build arcs. <laughs> Maybe. So Noah, you've never heard that before, I'm sure. So no, at this time, you're out here. So as he comes down, what's your name? Jonah. 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 We've got the whole Bible here tonight. <laughs> wow. Good work. So Jonah, you're going to come down. So you're going to walk in, Noah. As he walks in, he says, wait. Now give this catch fake. Yeah. So don't just stand. Just walk in slowly. You walk to cut. You sprint to screen. Yeah. Okay? Let's go. Straight. Not bad. Does he shoot with his hands or ankles? So did you pass to his hands or...
down a bit low, wasn't it? So what would improve that? Your stance. Stance. Now you can decide exactly, or bang, rock it in. Okay, here we go again. Good. Not bad. Come on out. Noah, have you made one yet? Tonight? Good. Good work. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is, do you know what a curl cut is? So why would you curl cut? Yeah, he's following you. So now in these shooting drills, the reason why uh, Noah's cut off Jonah's screen, straight cut, because the defense is dragging behind the screen with a catch fake. So now what happens is the defenses are, I'm going to send him high, but trail in his footsteps. So as he receives the ball, I'm right there with him. So Noah sees that, so now he's going to curl around the screen and you're going to call basket, okay? Because you're cutting to the basket and you're going to call pop after my grandfather. Sound good? So you're going to come down here, set the screen, wait, wait. Come on, Noah. Or you could even call curl if you want. And all you're going to do is back pedal to the foul line, call pop, receive the ball, catch it, be down. If you're a right-handed shooter, yeah. Be a left foot, pivot foot, and take the shot. Okay, here we go. Good. Two baskets. Good job. Nice job. Go again. Be down the stance now. Go. Good. Not bad. Nice job. Here we go. No pressure, but you've made every shot till now. Oh. Okay, not too bad. So, one thing you've got to be able to do is put a little bit of pressure on, have some fun with your kids, um, learn their names, give them teaching points, uh, and there's so much in this drill. But the benefit of the drill is, each time we have these sorts of cuts, then there's an opportunity for the cutter and the, and the screener. Let's say now, Noah, you see the defense players on the high side of the screen. So where are you going to cut then? Yeah, so the defense, I've come here. Wait, wait. The defense knows you've curled or straight, so they jump here. Where are you going to cut now? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, you are. We, you, we call that a flare, but this is going to be a back cut. You're going to cut behind the screen because now they've played on the high side. If, we, if I can leave you with another expression, let the defense be your instructor in these shooting drills. Where the defense plays, they will tell you where to cut. So when the defense plays on Noah, under the screen, they're telling him to cut high. If they're trailing, they're telling Noah to curl cut. If now they play on the high side, they're telling Noah to back cut. So now the defense plays on the high side. By their position, they're instructing Noah where to cut. So now you'll back cut. So you call basket, you call pop. Good job. Here we go. Not bad. Go again. Last one. Good. Job. One more. Come on, Noah. I'm with you. Here we go. There it is. There it is. Ugh. Jonah. Not bad. Okay. So, a little bit of screening technique combined with shooting, uh, shooting drills there. What we can do now is this is a 
a down screen, so an up screen is a screen that's set from the baseline up. We don't see a lot of these types of screens in this day and age, but believe me, they'll come back. So now you get a chance to be the cutter and you get a chance to be the screener, Noah. Okay? So what you're going to do is as you make your pass, you're going to stand here with this catch fake. You take a little step, but stand here as if you're expecting the pass to come back. Because now if I'm defending you, give me that target. I'm up here. You're going to come up and set your screen with your back to the corner of the court. That's your screening angle. So now you force me to play under or behind or over. But if you set a screen this way, I can just slide behind and play however I want. Screening angles are important. On down screens, we have our back to the ball. On up screens, we have our back to the corner of the, of the court. Give the kids geographical landmarks from which to locate so under pressure and they'll get bumped and crashed as they're trying to set screens, then they have some guideline about where to go. So now, come up and set. What do you say now? Um, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Good. Come right up. Here, the defense is right here, right here. Okay, now you're going to call basket. You cut to the basket. Now all you do is simply shape up here and call pop. Okay, let's do that. Go. Wait, wait, Austin. Not bad. Go again. Quick. So these are off up screens, the opposite to a down screen. Here we go. One more. Come on, Noah. Here we go. Be down, Noah. Be down, Noah. Drive with your legs, Noah. Good. Good. So, down screens, up screens. Opportunity for the cutter. But what are we doing to them with communication? We have offensive communication. So we want to teach the kids by being verbal, by being active, we're trying to unlock different methods of learning for them. They see, they hear cues from others, they speak, and then they react. So all those things will stand up under pressure. We may not do it in a game, but we may do it in a game, particularly if you're showing a straight cut and you want to curl. How many times have we seen a, a curl cut made? The passer thinks a curl, it's going to be a straight cut, it's a curl, and the ball goes flying out over the sideline. So communication is going to be pretty good with this. Let's bring the passes up here. Uh, Noah, let's put you on the top of the block. Jonah, let's put you on the wing. Ball, what's your name? Rosie. Rosie. Ball with Rosie. Uh, ball back to there. Now you're going to make the, you, you two are going to be the passes. So who's passing to whom here? Um, I'll pass to the person who goes basket. And, and what are they called? And who are you passing to? The screener. Good man. Good work. Ready? You're down in a stance. So you're going to pass the ball. Now this time when you set this back screen, you set the screen with your back to the basket. So now you've got a big target here. If I was setting it, it would be a huge target. Maybe. So when you pass, what do you think you'll do now? Step to the ball. Yeah, step to the ball, and what else? Your basket. No, no, not yet. What are you going to be telling him to do? Wait. Wait. Catch fake. Because then if this guy thinks oh, he's, he's getting it back, he'll come up and play, and you have a good, good chance to wipe him off. Down in a stance, hands ready. Go. Wait. Pop. Good. Nail it. Not bad. Now, I reckon... I reckon, Noah, if you catch the ball down, your accuracy will improve by about 45%. So you're up when you catch it, then you come down, but you don't come down too far, and your shots are just a little bit short. Technique looking good, but distance a problem. So get down, catch it down. Go. 
Good, not bad. Okay, that's okay. It's better to miss that way than short. Here we go, one more time. Good, here we go. When you set your screen and you come here, when, you ca when, you, when you've set your screen, just plant this foot and swing around here. Not this, here. So now you're down, you can catch it and drive to the bucket. Okay, here we go. Drive it, drive it. That's all right, that's good distance, that's good. One more, here we go. Now, this time, Noah, instead of cutting to the baseline side, just cut over the top. But you'll still pop, you'll still call basket. Here we go. Good. Yeah, oh dear me, it's a shooting clinic. Oh, good job. Good. Righto. So, there, that's an up screen, down screen, back screen. We'll just give you one more before we run out of time. This is called a turnout cut. So if you stand there, ball back out to the receiver. This time, Jonah, you're on the far side and you're gonna be facing in, Noah. Ball, foot on the high side of the block. Anytime somebody's on the post here, get them to have their low foot on the high side of the block. So now they've got two ways to go. No matter whether it's zone or man to man, <coughs> and sometimes we'll get you to face the ball, but in this case we won't. So, we call this a turnout cut. So you're going to turn out cut, and here are the cuts, similar to a down screen. When you come off this turnout cut, and you come off this, this is going to be a straight cut. If you get to the level of the screen, so you're going to call basket, you'll just slide to the basket. If you get to the level of the screen and he's, he's trailing you, we're going to curl cut. If we get to the level of the screen and the defense is on this side, you back cut. You'll just go opposite to him. Yeah. Okay, and call appropriately, hands up, you'll catch it down and away we go. Let's go straight cut first. Go. Good. Not bad. Now, make the simple shots, okay? That wasn't a bad shot, nice little reverse layup, but if you've got some help defense in there, they're going to gobble that up like you wouldn't believe. Just catch it and whoop, put it up the other side of the bucket. Hold it, what are you calling on him? What, what are you calling? Yeah, what are you calling? Yeah, or wait, you can call wait if you want, yeah. Here we go. Good, there we go. Good, much better. Good, here we go. Let's go back cut. That's a nice bounce pass method. We prefer that to be off the floor rather than off the head. Here we go. Good, good. Nice job, good. Here we go. Curl, curl. Good. Nice, good, here we go. Back, back. Good. Now you can see now the players are familiar with our terminology expectations, so I can cue what type of cut. How we would build this up now, on all these different cuts, we'd first put defense on the cutter and we'd instruct the defense to play however they want. We may tell them at first to play on the high side, set that up, then on the low side. Let's have, let's have a blue person out to play defense on Noah. What's your name? Adrian. Henry. Henry. Oh, I thought we could have had Joseph or Matthew or Mark or Luke or John to complete the... No, no, you're going to be on the, on the cutter. 
Now this time, on this curl cut, Henry, you defend however you want. You read how he defends and make the appropriate cut, and you react to his cut. Passes down, ready? Here we go. Not bad, not bad. Good cut, good decision, good pop. So then what we do is we'd put defense uh, on Noah, and then we'd make it as it would be in a game, two on two. So we'd break it down, then build it up. We could do that with all our, our screening um, techniques. Take a seat. We hear it for our demonstrators. So you'll see in that brief segment the fundamentals that Peter spoke about earlier link with all those drills. The position of down in a, down in a stance, being down, catching the ball, getting ready to drive. We have that same thing for the passes. The fundamentals that Nelson talked about, about being able to move correctly, being able to stay down in a stance, being able to change direction in a short uh, space, all link to those shooting drills. And then finally, we try and put it into a game circumstance where specifically we talk about down screens, up screens, back screens, turnouts. But what we add to it is a level of complexity. We add some communication, we add some visual cues, we add some verbal cues, and then we add some instructional uh, cues by communicating which direction the cut's going to be made. Then we put defense on the cutter, then we put defense on the screener, and that's how it would be in a game. So then we can drill those at game tempo. When shooting off screens, have the cutters slow down and let the defense be their instructor. So as the defense plays in one position, I'll cut into the other. If they play in another, I do that. That's the key. The great people, why they cut slowly off screens, it's like fishing. They let the fish jump on the hook and then strike late and it's hard for people to react. Any quick questions? Again, it's been an absolute pleasure to be here in Newcastle, my hometowns in Tamworth, which is just up the road a few hours. Um, it's great to see, I think we've got over 50 people here at the clinic tonight. But above all, it's been a great privilege to, uh, to share a clinic with uh, Peter Lonigan and Nelson Isley, two of the great teachers and, and coaches in our modern game. Thank you for the work you do as volunteer coaches with our players. Um, in my roles as uh, president of the World Association of Basketball Coaches and the chairman of FIBA's technical commission, as I travel the world, I tell them about the army of volunteers that we have like you that give up your time so that our players can enjoy the game more. And, uh, and we're eternally grateful for that. You do a fantastic job. So it's been great to be with you. Enjoy your coaching. And above all, make it fun for the players. And uh, be curious to learn and make it fun for yourselves. All the best.